The air show is back August 26 and 27 uh, this summer, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. And in studio with us right now is Nick Deal, who knows a thing or two about the airport uh, and other things, too. Nick, good morning to you, buddy. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Good to have you back. Rob, you gave the dates, but you didn't give the month. August. I didn't he say sure August. Did. did you say August? Yes, I missed sure August. Did. Okay. <laughs> You're I, good, Rob. I stand corrected, Rob. <laughs> It's okay. <laughs> Riley, yesterday, I, I, I guess I was talking about his, his, the percentage uh, lead that he has in uh, the race for the uh, Congress yeah. uh, yeah. seat, and uh, I guess I messed up that date, and Riley called me out about it. The, I, I, mean, I, got, I messed up the number. I think I said 82%. He had 88.8%. Yeah. He said, you're jipping sh- me. Yeah, don't shortchange <laughs> it. <laughs> like, oh, sorry. Uh, so, Nick, uh, this is uh, really quite a labor of love i'm assuming to kind of put this thing back i know we talked to wit about this uh, jim whitaker president of the uh, commission slash council oh i think a year and a half ago about bringing this back and right. it, it finally has come to reality here yes sir um we, we brought it back for the uh, 100th birthday of the airport we are the oldest airport in the state of west virginia and our 100th birthday is actually in june but we're doing an air show august 26 and 27 uh, west virginia's greatest air show and i can say that very comfortably it is the only air show in west virginia this year so right. um, 10 so tickets you provided me with Yes, sir. To give away to our audience and such. Yes, sir. So be watching for ways to win air show tickets. Now, who's sponsoring this, Nick? Just the airport? Or? So the um, our well, the the uh, county commission. Okay. Um, certainly is strongly supporting the event, and then we have numerous sponsors that we are actually putting together now. Uh, we got a we got a little bit of a slow start on uh, on looking at our uh, sponsorship pool, but uh, we have a, a number of sponsors that are involved. Um, Lovely Pixels is putting together all of our social media, our website, mm-hmm. uh, and some of our ads. They've been a fantastic partner um, we're working with the uh, the capital wing of the commemorative air force uh, they're uh, providing several aircraft and going to be real supportive of us and plus we have a number of area businesses that are going to uh, that are supporting the event so we're excited now in previous years back 10 years or so ago before before the accident mm-hmm. uh, united way was actually it was a partner are they still a partner that's correct so we are actually um going to I, it's funny that you say that because i just called penny uh last yeah. on friday i think and uh awaiting a return call from her mm-hmm. to uh talk about that we're we're going to do a uh, a hybrid of what we did in shows when they were on the civilian side of the airport back in uh 05 06 and 08 uh and what we did on the guard side when we were there in uh 10 11 and 12 and um, so what we, we have a national food vendor and a national product vendor, and we will be uh, asking uh, various nonprofits and, uh, and community groups to come out. And I say the word volunteer. It's really not volunteering, though, uh, to, uh, to man these booths, and we will give them either a percentage of the, uh, of the gross revenue from each individual booth or guarantee them a minimum amount of money that they can bring in for their organization to come out to the event. And so I think we'll have uh, strong su- community support for that as we have in the past. What type of events can we, will we be seeing? Well, um, I can tell you today that we just got word that we have the um, we have an F-22 Viper demo coming, which is the first time ever. We've never had one here, and if you've ever seen one, it is a pretty impressive, uh, pretty impressive act. We've had uh, F-16s, F-18s here, uh, but we've never had an F-22, so I'm very excited. There, uh, it's a, it is a. Um, it's a pretty impressive aircraft. It's the only aircraft in the military that can actually go to to speed without using afterburners, and so it's it's a little more stealthy than other than other fighters. You got. Uh, I understand Tom Cruise is coming in to do a buzz the tower. Oh, definitely. Kind of yeah. Top, top yeah. Gun, yeah. <laughs> Very big. <laughs> yeah, we're trying to find a building now. <laughs> <laughs> will, will you have Will you have some of the historic aircraft like you've had we will? Yourself? We have a number of historic aircraft. So because we are celebrating the 100th birthday of the airport, we are going to be bringing in a number of uh, aircraft. I actually have a cheat sheet here with a list of a f- just a few of them. Um, we have a uh, we have 
uh, military trainers and other aircraft from all over the world. Uh, we'll start with the P-51, which is actually the first aircraft at the 167th Airlift Wing when they came around in 1955. The Mustang, and, I think that is, Yes, right? sir. It's an, it's, and this one is uh, is owned by uh, Scott or Scooter Yoke. Scooter Yoke has been at every air show we've ever done, and uh, he is a West Virginia native. He's from Greenbrier County. He lives down in uh, in South Carolina now, but his P-51 is is, is magnificent it's he, he and his dad his dad passed away a few years ago but he and his dad built it and it's a beautiful aircraft so it's always exciting to see that and it's got a fantastic paint job too we have a b25 mitchell panchito coming uh from the uh, delaware museum so it's going to be a, a pretty popular aircraft for folks to watch um we have a uh um, a, a dh-115 vampire and the vampire was actually the first single uh, single engine jet in the military and it's also the first single gen engine jet that ever flew across the ocean um, it's it's a and it's also the uh, the first single uh, single jet uh, military aircraft that ever um, was engaged in combat so it's a it's a pretty neat uh, pretty neat aircraft um, we have a, a, a BT-13 Valiant we have a DC-3 coming we have a, a, a PT-17 Stearman a, a TBM Avenger that's a much larger aircraft than I thought it was because uh, I hadn't seen one until last year. Uh, T-6 uh, Texan um, have a number of, of historic aircraft coming. Then we've also got some newer ones. We've got, uh, oh, and of course there's there's going to be, uh, C-17 is going to be there. Um, so if people can do tours of that, people always enjoy to do that. Um, and we are, um, we have the Golden Knights coming to do a parachute drop and we're working on actually another parachute drop team as well. Um, and it should be a very exciting show. We have a, a, a Bucher Jungmeister, which is a German trainer, uh, coming in. Jerry Wells, who's flown in a number of our shows, he's flying that. And so it's, it's a really strong lineup, and we are getting more and more military and civilian aircraft for static every day. And so we will keep you posted on that. Bill, for, I believe President Bush 41, Ger George Herbert Walker Bush, for his 80th birthday, jumped out of a plane. <laughs> Forget it. I'm thinking. I love this. I'm I thinking, like where you're going, Rob. Right? I like where you're Honorary going. Honorary Golden Knight. I think yeah. we get bills. The Admiral's got to jump. It's, he's got to jump. The Admiral should jump. I, you, I would put some cheddar in there yeah, for that. You're, you're, for put a, put a, a charity put, of your choice. You're, you're, put a camera on his shoulder. Let him Let him go. You're prompting me to a story. <laughs> I, I, remember as, I, gotta hear. I remember as a six or seven-year-old kid uh, in the rural area of Tennessee, mm -hmm. we're driving along the road, and there's some, kid, some folks uh, jumping out of an airplane with parachutes uh, obviously uh, and my father pulled over to to look at him well the first guy we saw jump out the parachute did not open and it has made a vivid memory in my life that the guy made a big splat when he hit oh, wow. <laughs> and uh, so no you're not catching me <laughs> jumping out of an airplane bill what are the odds of that happening again <laughs> I, I can right. tell you to me it's not going to happen again i think you're overreacting <laughs> it, it's the guy that you're strapped to that has the parachute it's not you don't get one bill well and we have another option yeah. we have a we have a helicopter i think it's going to so do you are doing the helicopter drop things yeah so you could do one of those. Yeah. Are, are you going to do the uh, the helicopter rides on the Huey? Or, or same we, as are, did, we are actually you working, working on, on something like that. We, we are going to do rides. That was fantastic. Yeah, those, that was yeah. very cool. Yeah. I remember being strapped in next to Craig Bottleton. <laughs> um, and I didn't realize our legs were kind of hanging off the side. But, yeah, when you bank on those things, it, yeah. it, it's yeah. open door. It, yeah. it, it was a lot of fun. Better now, make sure your seatbelt's on. Helicopters <laughs> is a different story. I was flying over Antarctica years ago, and just two of us, some Bell aircraft, a Bell helicopter, and I looked out, and the, uh, the single engine was on fire. And <laughs> I mentioned to the pilot, hey, we're on fire. He looked up and said, so we are. <laughs> didn't say anything more. And we got back to, we got back to the ship, uh, the icebreaker, and I said, didn't you hear me? We were on fire he said yeah wasn't a darn thing i could do about it so no, no reason to worry about it bill no wonder why you're in the navy you're not gonna jump out of anything in the navy. yeah yeah i have a let's go back quickly to the uh, air show nick and i know the answer because you and i talked about it the other day but folks frequently ask will there be balloons again we did have balloons a few years ago right. and there's a whole suite of problems and of yeah here. it's i think balloons are very pretty to watch yeah. they are uh it is very difficult to get them 
getting organized and flying. We found out the hard way. Yeah, <laughs> it's just well, a, no wind yeah, last yeah. yeah, if there's if the wind is not exactly where it needs to be and the temperature is not exactly yeah. where it needs to be, they can't fly. Yeah, so. and so it's it's much. Aircraft uh, airplanes are much more predictable. Yeah. <laughs> so now yeah. we are going to be doing some some uh, commemorative Air Force going to be selling rides before and after the event in most of their aircraft. Okay, so that'll be something that people might want to look. We'll have that on our website pretty soon and our Facebook uh, link to the commemorative Air Force site, so you can sign up for those if you want to fly. I remember the stealth bomber in the '90s making an appearance at the airport. That was before my time, but I've yeah. heard about that many times. Looked like the bat plane. Yep, yep. When well, you saw it, it's pretty cool. We're working on some surprise flyovers. We don't, we don't, we don't have mm-hmm. anything to officially announce yet, but uh, I did want to come let you guys know about this F twenty two because I think that's going to be impressive. What do you think in regards to tourism in the uh, in the area that weekend, Nick? In, in terms of who you might attract? Well, so historically, uh, about half of our audience comes from the within about a thirty mile radius of the uh, of the airport, and then the rest of the folks come from not just the Quad State area, but but all over the country. We have people primarily from the East Coast, but we've had a number of folks come in from out west, from from the uh, you know from we had we had some uh, folks coming from Chicago. As a matter of fact, we had the um, we had the. Uh, the executive secretary to the city manager of the city of Chicago come to our air show in 2008. That was the last one we did on the civilian side because she wanted to see how we organized the event because they have a huge air show in Chicago, but the the mayor had asked for them to put together a smaller private one, and so she was trying to get a feel for how that worked. And I got to give uh, Nick some credit here. If you've never been to an event that Nick has organized, uh, I mean, if you went last year to the fireworks or uh, the birthday the county birthday um or any of the shows that he's put on probably the most well organized and well oiled machine uh that you could go to so um Nick, kudos that. to you on that um and, in uh, regards to uh parking and traffic though because i did hear there was a lot of backup in regards to trying to get out from the airport we had one, that weekend. Well, that, we had one accident but that yeah, yeah. well what, we what actually did help that so yeah. actually we just had a meeting yesterday with the the um, state police, with the sheriff's department, with Department of Highways, and with the 167 security forces, specifically to talk through that. And so we are doing an event July 1st again this year. It's sponsored to us by CMC. It's brought to us by CMC. I'll tell you about that in just a second. But it's got it's going to be a great event too, and it's going to be very similar to last year. So it should be a lot of fun. We got oh, we got three great bands. Uh, we have Junk Food. If you haven't heard them, they do 80 stuff and some of their own things. They have they're a good band. Nathan Nathan Bar which a lot of people have heard. Oh, yeah. He's a local guy. Had him on the show. So he's fantastic, yeah. And uh, then the Jamie Seeley Band is going to be out. So we're excited for those. Uh, we have Kid Village. is going to be brought to you by the Boys and Girls Club. Um, we're going to be doing some flyovers. There's going to be a, a beer garden there, which we did not have last year, and lots of food trucks and, and more more stuff than we had in previous years. So it should be fun. But with regards to uh, to the exit of that event and the air show, we're going to be working very closely with a large group of folks instead of just uh, a couple of volunteers uh, steering. Are you going to have fireworks that. for the July first? Is yes, that sir. is that the? Yep. It's the July fourth yes, celebration sir. essentially. Fantastic. Yes. Is that going to be on the civilian side or the? Yeah, on, in the civilian side, same place it was same last year. Last year. Okay. Uh, it's uh, it's if you find Pilot Way right off yeah, Novak okay. Drive, okay. that's where it's all going to be. Okay. And parking for the air show is also going to be on. Um, we're going to have parking off of uh, Pilot. Pilot Way. As a matter of fact, the entire field that we're using for the July 1st event will be nothing but parking, and then we'll have parking in all of our fields around the area, uh, including a large field up uh, up on um, uh, Airport Road uh, that we own there too. So we'll be shuttling people in from that one. Um, then when we leave, it's going to be so we're we're telling people to come in off of I-81. That's the easiest way to get yeah. into the event. And when folks leave the air show, it is going to be two lanes on Novak going out all the way to the interstate. There'll be no turning, so if you live on Route 11, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to go out to the interstate and yeah. come back around. Yeah. But uh, it'll be, I think it's going to get people out of there much faster. We actually took this from how they handle traffic in Morgantown for games. And so we had state police talk to us about that yesterday and show us how we're going to how we're going to do that. And, and if you were patient last support. year, you got out. I mean, mm-hmm. we, we were patient. We got out. We yeah, it was plenty of time. Yeah. It, it just took a little longer than we yeah. 
than we would have liked last year. And but there was a lot of people, and they had a we, great time. Yeah. And so. in fairness, we anticipated two or 3,000 people, and we got like 7,000 folks yeah. out there. So. Well, well, and that's what I'm thinking with this air yeah. show. People just want to get out more now. Right. right? You want to mm-hmm. get out, you want to do stuff because you were tired of not being able to do stuff. Right. Hey, uh, while we have a delegate in the House here, legislatively, did anything in this session happen that affects airports or transportation in your game at all this uh, um, Not not directly. This is actually the first year that we have not talked to our legislature about adding some new some new laws or, or working on existing laws to try to support airports. And we did that specifically. We, we waited a year because for the gosh for the first three years I was in this job, we got new legislation passed every year that has been a huge shot in the arm, not just our airport, but the airports all over the state. And so we were very proud of that track record. And I wasn't sure if I could do four and oh, so I figured I'd hedge my bets and wait till next year. And the governor just announced the, you know, for, for Jaeger down in, in Charleston, they, they got a new carrier down there for, for yeah. um, things. So there are some things in the works. It's definitely at the forefront of people's mind. Um, Nick, what's your thoughts on locally you know what do you, what does the airport could we ever see that at our airport are I, we more cargo based? i do think well i do think that one of these years we will see that yeah it's likely not going to be in my lifetime or years unfortunately okay. um it's a i, I think what's going to happen is, is when we get to such a population mass in this area yeah 50 75 years from now then you'll see some commercial service again we had commercial service until the 80s and then the feds stopped funding airports like ours and you could have one airport in one region and yeah. we actually the the at the time the airport authority decided not to not to do Kanawha, that anymore. Kanawha County is about what three times or four times the size of, of Berkeley. No, Kanawha County is, is Kanawha County has a population of about one hundred and seventy thousand. Okay, we, we will catch up to them by so twenty thirty. Right we'll actually probably be the largest county in the state in twenty thirty. Nick, there's been a significant makeover of the airport in the last five, ten, fifteen. Five ten years. Yes, Would sir. you describe what some of the changes have been? Yes. So uh, about three years ago, we were able to we we really took over all of the other buildings and things that we didn't uh, didn't own or control before. And so we purchased the FBO, we purchased charter service, we purchased the um, the flight school, we purchased five hangars, we purchased some office buildings, and we did all that because historically the way the funding works for our particular airport, we're a general aviation airport, but we're the largest airport in West Virginia, and we are all the second busiest airport in West Virginia, and only 10% of that is military. And so we had a lot of demand, but the FAA says, oh, well, gee, we don't, we don't want to recognize the military aircraft, so you really don't need that much runway. So for, the, for you know, many, many, many years, they only funded us as a small airport, even though we, we have so much more need than that. Well, because of the work that we've done, because we were able to get these hangars and because we were able to bring in all this other business, we, were, we finally got ourselves to a place where now we're classified by the FAA as a larger airport. And so that means more. Now, it's, unfortunately, there's matching money involved, which is something that we will talk to the legislature about. Um, but there is more funding available for the airport now than there ever has been. It took us 99 years to get to that status but you're close to being self-sustaining are you not we are closer we are closer than we've ever been the reality is because of our, how our funding stream works with the feds we can never we could never be self-sufficient even if we technically were um, we have to show funding from the city and from the county to maintain uh, what we have here but, in order to generate some of those federal funds right correct. and that's the that's but, that's how that federal funding works. They want to right. make sure they're getting it from everywhere. Yeah. Right. But we have, you know, we, we are um, as close to we as close to self-sufficient as we've ever been because we're able to take control of our own destiny now. And for clarification, uh, currently the airport authority has members from both uh, Berkeley County and, and the city, city of Martinburg. Yes, sir. But not Jefferson County. Correct. They, Jefferson County is kind of on again, off again. Yeah. We'd love to have them as, as ongoing members of the uh, board, um, but it just they're going to have to decide to do that. Nick Deal, the director over at the airport, and the air show is coming back. The 100th anniversary of the airport will coincide with this return of the air show on August the 26th and 27th from 10 until 5 uh, at the airport. And uh, Nick was running down uh, some of the activities. 
activities that you'll be able to see that day. Is this all posted at the uh, airport's website, Nick? Sure. So the, the air show, uh, is it's it's on our website. You can also go to wvairshow.com, and all the information is there. You can buy tickets there, tickets right now. We have an early bird special, so they're 20 bucks instead of 25 uh, Come June 1st, they'll be 25 bucks a piece. Uh, the July 1st, um, the website, we have some information on the July 1st event on the website. That will officially kick off. Uh, you'll see an, an actual website for that from our website uh, beginning next Monday. Whatever happened with the proposed charter school at the airport? We are we have not given up on that. That's uh, we have to have the funding to do it, and we we talk to some of the national groups that do charter schools, and it just doesn't fit our mission. We want it to be an aviation related uh, or a STEM school, mm-hmm. and not fit into somebody else's mold and so we're going to have to we are actually continuing to look for support and grants for that but it's going to be it's going to take a few million bucks to get it off the ground the airport authority is very supportive of that we would be essentially growing our own pilots and our own mechanics and our own um, air air industry experts uh, with a school like that and we're We've received a lot of support for that verbally, but um, it's also an expensive endeavor. Now, Shepherd University had shown expressed some interest in working yes, with you. Yes, sir. Not- As a matter of fact, um, yeah, the, we still, uh, the, you know, Shepherd would partner with us on this if we can get it off the ground, yeah. Yeah. and it would be perfect because they already have a program where you can uh, you can get a concentration in, um, or you can get a minor. I'm sorry, a. Uh, yeah, concentration in aviation through their business administration program in partnership with Bravo Flight Training, which is the flight school we have there. Our kid I used to coach uh, recently reached out, uh, I guess, last season, and uh, he's in his uh, second year at flight school. I guess Embry Aeronautics University, yep. I think, is it's where a good school. he is going. So it would seem to me that uh, there would be some interest in that around here because there are three major airports in a very short drive from here. That's exactly right. Right. Yes, sir. And I'm going to guess that uh, along with everything else, there's probably a shortage of mechanics and crew and whatever that uh, as that there's, population yeah, there's, ages. There's a huge shortage of mechanics. Yeah. Um, so that's... Nick, any final thoughts uh, to wrap it up before we go? No, get, go to our website, flymrb.com, and you'll find everything you need there. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me.